In today's business environment, it is necessary for enterprises to offer application programming interfaces to the services that they offer. They must be in the API business. Here we see that the APIs offered by our example Acme Air Corporation are actually provided by four different business units of the enterprise. Each unit is using their own unique processing source to provide the resources made available through the API. It is for this reason that Acme Air chose API Connect because of its ability to access all of these different kinds of processing sources and still offer a uniform API for each type of information. Here is the topology of the API Connect solution. The developer portal allows external developers to learn about and subscribe to the APIs offered by the various Acme Air units. The developer portal offerings are controlled by the API management node. The APIs that eventually appear on the developer portal are developed by a team of API developers using the API Connect Developer Toolkit. Once the API is published, it then becomes callable and usable through the API gateway associated through the API management node with the particular APIs. That gateway actually handles the API traffic that may go directly to the various different kinds of backends or through a microservice application, all of which is offered by API Connect in a largely code-free environment. The need to provide API products through different business units and using the API Connect topology raises a number of issues that many customers ask. For example, how are these APIs developed? How are they packaged? Who controls what APIs appear on the developer portal? How can multiple teams work on APIs simultaneously without conflict? What mechanism is available for enforcing the controls that need to be in place? What mechanism is available for protecting the various assets? How can you tell what APIs do and do not work? And how do you evolve these products? This presentation and this course will provide answers to these questions. An API Connect workflow consists of some core components, which we will review before getting into greater detail. As you can see here, the core workflow components consist of API and app drafts, product drafts, spaces, catalogs, the developer portal, the data power gateway, and a collective. We will now walk through each of these and show you how they work together to create a workflow. API construction begins by creating draft APIs. This is typically done using the API designer. The API designer runs on the workstation of the engineer creating the API. The APIs are included in products, which also have plans. Products can be published through spaces. Spaces are optional within a particular catalog. They are useful for maintaining separation of work between teams when they're working on more than one API at a time. Spaces are configured at the catalog level, and once they are configured, then designers must choose a space through which to publish. All of the published products end up as part of a catalog. The catalog contains all of the products that have been published through all of the spaces within that catalog. 
the catalog itself also has a particular data power gateway and a particular developer portal associated with it. Clients or customers who want to use the new published APIs find out about those APIs through the developer portal. The developer portal will list all of the available APIs. It will allow the external developer to test out that API and then to subscribe their applications to the particular APIs they want all through the developer portal. At runtime, the subscribed applications actually call the URLs that hit the data power gateways associated with the catalog. Now we'll take a look at the workflow in greater detail. At the beginning is development. This is where the API developers use the API toolkit running on their local workstation to create the APIs and potentially some products that contain those APIs. Those draft APIs and products are typically then published to a development server, which may or may not have spaces inside the catalogs. This is running on a management server inside an organization that is specifically designed for the development organization. Once all of the APIs and products have been unit tested and the design confirmed by the product managers on the development server, then the API developers will once again use their toolkit to pull down any altered definitions of the APIs and products and recommit them to the change management system being used by the enterprise. In this way, copies of the APIs, the products that contain them, the plans, exist both on the development server and in the change management system. Once they're placed in the change management system, anyone who has access to that system can pull the definitions and work on them. In a typical workflow, the products and APIs that have been created in development are now moved to a test management server. This is typically done by a publisher. That depends on the kinds of roles and permissions that have been established for the members of the organization. But typically a publisher moves the definitions using the API toolkit from development to the test server. These development definitions are moved to the test server by pulling those definitions out of the change management system. If the product managers want to make any changes to the final products, they can do so at this time by reorganizing the APIs and products that they assemble on the test server. Of course, those changes are then re-updated in the change management system. This also allows the test engineers to test the APIs and products both through the test gateway and through the test dev portal, just as if it was a production environment. Once the test phase has completed and any changes to the API or other code have been tested, the publisher then moves it to production. Once an API has been published into production, that API then appears on the development portal where external developers can see and sign up to use those APIs. Those API developers must first sign up for login credentials for the developer portal, which may require the product manager to approve those credentials. The external developers register their applications on the portal, subscribe those applications to the APIs, and then start to use the APIs using the URLs that hit the gateway. 
the external developers can see activity on their usage through the developer portal analytics. These analytics data is what the product manager and the application developer use to decide whether or not their API is successful or not, or whether or not they should make changes to the API. Another way in which the product manager and API developer can see requests for changes is through the support tickets and forum also offered by the developer portal. A product and API moves through a series of lifecycle states in API Connect. Typically, an API and product starts out in the draft stage. It is then staged to a particular catalog or space on a server. At that point, it is published to a particular catalog, at which point it becomes visible on the developer portal and the gateway. From the published state, it is possible to then deprecate the product, in which case no further subscriptions are possible, but existing subscriptions still work. At that point, the deprecated product can be retired, which means that it is no longer available for use and all subscriptions are automatically canceled. Note that it is possible to jump straight from drafts to published, and straight from published to retired. It is also possible to supersede or replace an already published product with another published product. Superseding a published product means that the old version still works, but it's placed in a deprecated state and existing subscriptions still valid. However, the application developers must migrate their subscriptions to the new version of the product. Replacing the product simply replaces the existing product and all subscriptions are automatically migrated. Once a product is retired, it is then possible to either archive or delete the product. It is possible to go from archive to delete. Once a product is deleted, it is no longer available at all on the server and it cannot be recovered. An archived product can potentially be recovered and restaged. At all of these stages, it is possible to require approval in order to move the product and its APIs between states. The approvals required for each lifecycle stage are set at the catalog level with these catalog level settings. Here you see an example of the various lifecycle stages that are available to products that have already been published in a catalog. API Connect uses membership roles and permissions to control who can do what within API Connect. There are members, there are roles, and there are provider organization permissions. For each member has a role assigned, and each role has a set of permissions assigned. The API Connect administrator decides what members can be added, what roles they have and what permissions each role has. Here you see the various members, their roles, and which space that they are assigned to. Each role has a set of permissions, and these permissions pertain to things like analytics, product life cycle approvals, subscriptions, what kind of spaces can be created and joined, developer organizations, and applications. Here you see an example of the permissions set for each role, again at the catalog level. Once an API has been published and is used, 
it is analytics that provide information about how much use that API is getting. Analytics are available to both the API provider through the API management interface and to the API external developer through the portal.